watching Final Score with Wes Moore on Fox 16. And welcome back into the Final Score. And we were talking about the Little Rock Trojans there in the last block. Hey, why don't we just make this the whole show dedicated <laughs> to the Little Rock Trojans? Off to a heck of a start. Head coach Daryl Walker joining us in here. And, and coach, like I said there, I mean, you guys are off to a, a heck of a start this season. I, I think catching a lot of people Maybe a little bit by surprise. Yeah, probably so, but it's, it's been fun. I thought we had a great summer this year recruiting players yeah. and a great summer of working our guys out and putting our system in. And, and now you see how it's all coming together right now. Now, what's the biggest difference that you've noticed year one to year two? Well, the freshmen that I started last year are now sophomores. Kamani and right. Mar Marquise, those guys are playing Ooh. well. And we've gotten more length. Last year, I thought we were too small. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look out on the basketball court, we're a pretty big basketball team right now. Yeah, and, uh, and you know, we, we kind of talked about this a little bit yesterday, but, whoo, man, you guys are giving people heart attacks out there. You guys have been in some close ball games, but you've been winning a lot of those close ball games, whereas maybe last year, it wasn't so much the case. Exactly. Last year, we lost a lot of those basketball games and demoralizing, but this year, these guys have kept their composure, they kept their poise, and that's the way you win down the stretch. And now, when it's tight games, you can tell with my team that they're under control, they're trying yeah. to run what we're doing offensively and defensively, so it's fun to watch as a coach. And now, have you seen that kind of progress even just throughout this season? You know, some of those guys you mentioned, Marquise and Kamani, are really starting to kind of take the lead in those crunch time moments. Well, I tell you what, they were in a lot of those crunch time moments last year yeah. where we lost the basketball game and kind of were demoralized by it. And I just kept, kept telling them, your time is coming. And now these guys are taking the next step and taking us to another level right now. Did you expect them to take that next step so quickly? I, I mean, it's one thing to, to kind of get that year under your belt. You've kind of been through some battles, battle tested a little bit, but, but now, I mean, it's the, the whole script has been flipped. Well, both those guys were pretty, pretty talented. Or I wouldn't have been, well, yeah. I wouldn't have been playing them as freshmen. <laughs> yeah. And I knew I was going to take some lumps my first year by playing those guys. But mm -hmm. I knew in the second year I was hoping they were going to take the next step. And they've taken a, a little bigger step than I thought they were going to take. Let's just be honest about that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They've been out of control. You can see that. Oh, yeah, even against uh, <laughs> Texas Arlington there. I mean, good Lord, these yes. guys just went crazy. And not, not just with the points, but, you know, they were active on the defensive yes. side. They're getting rebounds. Uh, I mean, these guys are, are become the go-to guys here. No, Kamani is, I mean, look, he, he's stepping up. I mean, last year he couldn't make free throws. He's shooting about 75, 76 <laughs> yeah. percent. Uh, Marquise, I always knew that he could score the basketball. Right. It's just a matter of time when he, before he was going to break out. And now he's a very confident player. And basically my whole team was a confident team. And, and, and kind of going back to those close games, mm -hmm. uh, what have you seen that do for your team in ter terms of kind of swagger, mojo, at, you know, going from game to game when, when you kind of get those tense moments? Now it's like... Well, it's, it's crunch time. It's a three, four-point game. It's two minutes left in the game. Those guys are in the huddle say, hey, man, it's winning time. I'm yeah. not saying it. They're saying it. <laughs> They're saying it. it's, it's winning time. And for a young basketball team, that's a, that's a huge step to take. And, you know, I just try to draw up a good play to put the ball in the right person's hands to try to get, get some execution and get a good look at the basket. Now, now, yesterday we were talking with them after that uh, Texas Arlington game. You know, not to say that they're bringing it up constantly, but they, but they know. It, these guys read. They're not, they're not dumb. You know, they, they've seen the picks, okay. the, the media picks, things like that. They know where they were picked, almost dead last in the league. Right. Hey, 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 here they are, first <laughs> place. And they've got a little, you know, a little Conor McGregor about I mean, them right I now. I think they, have, they, don't have, they don't have a real cocky swagginess about them, but they do right. have a little swag. Yeah. And to be honest about it, I've never – Bought it up about we were picked last. Yeah. They figured that out on their own, and they were a little insulted by it, and they're playing. But to be honest about it, it's great that we won four games. But let's be honest, we haven't done anything yet. We just got to keep winning basketball games. And that's what I told my team today. Let's just keep having good practice habits, and let's just keep trying to win one game at a time. Seems to be working so far. So, you you so guys far. have got a, a lot of wins piled up so far. No, it's, 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 it, winning is good. I've been on the other side of it, too. I yeah, know, just I know. last year. Even. It's, it's two things. There's misery and there's winning. Yeah. That's what I tell my team is either misery or winning. And right now we're winning, and we're and, happy about it. And it seems to be that, uh, you know, that the winning is infectious, just, oh, the, just the same as losing can be. Exactly, exactly. And that's, that's exactly right what you just said. But the winning part, I knew it was going to come. It's going to be a while. And like I said, we haven't accomplished anything yet, but we are setting ourselves up to accomplish mm -hmm. something good down the line if we can stay healthy and just keep playing good basketball. Do you feel like you're maybe a little ahead of the curve? Because, I mean, obviously, you know, you're playing a lot of freshmen last year, right. sophomores this year. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, those are your lead dogs here. But, <laughs> but I mean, you even mentioned earlier, you know, they've kind of taken a bigger leap than what you maybe expected. Oh, no doubt. And the leap more than offensive side, really, to me, it's the defensive side where everybody is taking the leap. Yeah, you see, yeah. you see Kamani scoring. You see Marquise, who's a gifted scorer. But defensively, we're really getting after guys. And that's why we've been able to win games on the road by defending people. Hey, defense leads to offense. Uh, a lot of times we've seen that with, with schools across the, uh, the country here. Uh, and, you got, and what's really amazing about this whole thing is you've been doing it shorthanded. 
<laughs> well, I, I, I try not to bring that up because I'm, sure. I'm an old school guy. You play next man up. But, yeah. you know, of course, we got th I've been playing with three starters out, Alshon Evans, uh, uh, Chris Bankston, and, and Nicola. You're talking about 6'8", 6'10", and 6'6", that's been, that's been sitting on the bench for the last, how many games we played, whatever, 15, 14 games. So I miss those guys. Now, I guess without giving too much away here, when can we expect some of those guys maybe to get – Implemented into things. Here. Hopefully next week we'll we'll get uh, Ooh, right. get Chris back and get Nicola back and you know Alshon. I don't know when Alshon's going to come back because he's dealing with a really bad severe uh, turf toe. Right. I don't know when we're going to get him back, but we sure could use him. Now, now, what's the hardest thing from a coaching standpoint? I mean, guys are gelling right now, albeit a very short bench. Mm -hmm. And how do you try to go about reincorporating some of those guys with without having a whole lot of practice time or, or game time I with was, them? All together. It's funny you brought that up because I was talking to somebody about that a couple of days ago. I'm just saying those guys are going to come off the bench because the guys that have been starting to this point deserve to start. And so whether you're a starter or not, you're going to come off the bench. And I'll find a way because Nico's a very talented 6'10 six, six, center, oh, very yeah. talented, very skilled. So he's going to get he's going to get some minutes. Now, now, what kind of center is he? Is he kind of one of those stretch guys? Because I know we, we tend to see a lot of that <laughs> nowadays. Uh, in fact, they had the big debate with, uh, you know, the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, I know that came up in the national uh, you know, conversation about, you know, or oh, guys aren't really banging. You know, Chuck Zingas. and Shaq had a little something to say yeah. about that. Well, yeah, with Porzingis and everything. The game has changed and some guys don't want to accept that. The game has changed. Uh, I, I think Nico is, is a post-up player. I think yeah. he can put the ball on the floor. Not, you know, thinking he can post up, he can put the ball on the floor, and he can stretch out to the three-point line. So he brings a dimension to our team and to the Sun Belt that's really big time. Yeah, I want to get uh, more into the Sunbelt Conference as a whole here, but we're going to take a quick break here. We got much more here with Coach Gerald Walker here. Again, I said we're, we're making this a Trojan <laughs> special right here. So make sure you stay with us here. More final score coming up. You're watching Final Score with Wes Moore on Fox 16. Good place. And welcome back into the final score here. More with Coach Gerald Walker. You know, we, we were getting into the break there. We we're talking a little bit about the Sunbelt Conference here. Uh, I, I want to know, what, what's this league like? Because, you know, we were talking there in the, in the last block about, you know, the stretch guys out and right. everything like that. But this seems to be a banger type of league, kind of a, maybe like a Big Ten light sort of a league. Not, not, not as high level as a Big Ten, sure. but we do have some physical guys in the yeah. league. But to me, I think the Sun Belt is more of a guard-oriented, small forward league with a lot of okay. skilled guys. Uh, we played Ar Texas Arlington last night. They had a lot of... We were bigger, but they had a lot of skilled guys that yeah. could shoot, could put the ball on the floor, it was athletic. So that's the way this league has always been. And, and I know uh, Coach Bellotto up there at Arkansas State, you know, they kind of took it on the chin this past weekend. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, he said this is a tough league. Now, now albeit it's kind of been a one-bid league here the past few years, mm -hmm. but, but don't let that fool you. I mean, this, this is a nasty, rough and rugged league. No, it's a good league. And just taking a look at some of the, some of the other teams when you're out you, when you're scouting, you might mm -hmm. see App State plays, yeah. Georgia State play, and you like, wow. Anybody can win this league. We may be up 4-0 in the league right now, but I'm not thinking about that. I just think this is a winnable league. Anybody can win it. And it's funny you say it. it's one of those sort of wide open. I think this is, at least for me in recent history, about as wide open as mm -hmm. this league has been because, you know, you got you guys sitting there at first place. Right. You know, a bevy of teams, the Georgia's sitting at three and one apiece right. there. And then, heck, Texas State I was just sitting say, right there at the bottom. And that's been a good team the past years. And that's a really good basketball team. Yeah. And that was a really good win for us at home yeah. at the Jack Stevenson. And trust me, that team is better than what their record says. <laughs> trust me, it's early. That team is better than that. Now, talking about the league here, you've made the, the block uh, one time around here at least. What, mm -hmm. What's one of the more nastier places <laughs> to go on the road in this, in this entire league? Well... Louisiana Monroe is not a friendly place. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a friendly place. They're wild uh, down there. Uh, A-State can get very aggressive up there. Your, your got, school. Yeah, got, your the, school. got a little rivalry going they, they there. Yeah. get a little aggressive up there. And then Lafayette can get a little, little nasty down there. But it's, it's, it's all good and fun as long as nobody crosses the line. Absolutely. Here, and, and let's, not, let's not sleep on the jack here. I mean, when, <laughs> when it's rocking, the jack... It gets rowdy, and that's probably one of the rowdier student sections. Now, they may not have the numbers a lot of time, but right. ooh, they will rock. <laughs> do, do you actually hear some of them? I mean, when for you're the, the first game? time that that Texas State game, I it was loud. And that's why I got on the microphone after the game to let the fans know that, man, we need you every night here because you're, you're our sixth man. You yeah. help us win basketball games. We feed off of their energy. And you can really see that, especially in that Texas Arlington game. I mean, that one was one of those games. Back and it's forth. It's back and forth affair, and, you know, you could tell your team – just throughout a game, just kind of has that little lull. Just stuff most, isn't most, working. Both teams does. Both, yeah. both teams does. The game is always a game of run. Whoever can get the final run usually wins the game. Now, that's the, the other interesting thing I wanted to, to ask you about. If you guys have won in a bevy of different ways. You, yeah. You've grinded games out. 
you've had some shootouts. <laughs> uh, you've you've kind of let some other teams have it. You've kind of taken it on the chin a couple of right. times. But, you know, against the likes of Memphis and we, what we've seen with Arkansas now, uh, and that's maybe a, if there's such a good thing as a good loss. Yeah, no, Arkansas was playing, Arkansas was playing well. I knew, yeah. Eric, I knew Eric Bosman would do a great job on top of the hill. But we've played some good games. So Memphis, North Carolina State. Now, you got to understand, yeah. we, we played Memphis without three starters. That's true. We lose 68-58. But in the first half with – 10 minutes in the game, they only 10 minutes in the first half, they only had seven points. We had our chances to win, but you can't turn the ball over 27 yeah. times and think you're going to beat Memphis. And we lose 68 58. But when I walked out that building, I told my assistant coach, Coach Baker, I said, We got a chance to be a pretty good basketball team this year. Now, for you personally, what was it like to go up there and play against Arkansas? Obviously, you, you were a former player up there and kind of all that connection that you've got up there. I mean, what was that like to be a part of that atmosphere? And then especially, too, they kind of <laughs> put the icing on the cake, renaming the court that same night. Well, it was great for, uh, for, for my guys to see Nolan Richardson and what he was about and yeah. why that court was being named after him. But for me, I just saw so many familiar faces that uh, when I was a player there from right. from 80 to 83 and everybody was calling my name and gave me a great ovation when they announced my name as the head coach. So it was it was an enjoyable enjoyable game for me. It really was. It brought back a lot of memories. I wish the game was in Barnhill, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now that would have topped it off here. Uh, it had to be a little odd for you in, in a way that it, you're getting as much cheers and, and, and everything like that as, as a road team. You guys were the visitors, but hey, they're still, you know, hey, all right. Well, I mean, they, 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 they've respected my career of what I've mm -hmm. put up, what I've accomplished since I left the University of Arkansas, tried to keep my nose clean and represent the state of Arkansas. Uh, when I left Arkansas, I always said I got to make sure everything is clean and, and, and neat because the state is always looking up to me. So I've always yeah. tried to carry myself in the right way. Well, you seem to be doing it so far here. Uh, you know, another team up there, Northeast Arkansas, I want to ask your, your <laughs> take on the, on, the, on the rivalry here because I know it a lot of times – it, it, it seems to be more fan-driven than right. it is with the players, but we've seen some pretty nasty slugfests. You're talking about Arkansas State? Oh, yeah. I, I'm probably getting in, I'm getting in trouble for saying that. <laughs> I don't think it's a rivalry until both teams are starting to win some basketball games. You can say what you want about that. <laughs> and I know some fans are going to get mad at me, but I think a rivalry when you t both teams are really winning and they're really going after it hard. Right now, both teams are trying to find an identity of yeah. how to win and to win some basketball games and come out of the cellar and rise up to the top. Yeah, because it was kind of odd to see both teams kind of on the on the lower yes. end of the of the Sun Belt last year's, and but those were still some pretty epic battles. No, that, that was good game. We the first game here, we were up by. 15, 16, 17 points and should have won yeah. and wind up, wind up losing the basketball game. And then we went there, they just beat the daylights out of us. Man, what is, what is it like to be to be in just sort of those couple of atmospheres? I mean, whether it be Arkansas, uh, I know Arkansas State is usually a pretty well-attended right. game always, on both always, sides of these things. Always, Well, I've been, I've been in big games my whole career. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm usually pretty calm over there mentally inside. I may be going emotionally outside a little bit, but on the inside I'm calm because I've been in a lot of big games and a lot of big arenas. Seems to be the, the, a little bit of the opposite of, of head coach Mike Bellotto up there. He's a fiery guy. Yeah, you know, he's got a little bit of that Cuban he, in him. He, he, he got a little Rick Pitino in him. That's, that's, who, he, that's, who, he, that's, that's, right. that's who he worked for. Yeah. Not the, he worked for a Hall of Fame coach in Rick Pitino. And, uh, just, give, just give Coach some time up there. He'll get it turned around. All right, let's kind of bring back the focus to you guys here. Mm -hmm. Big game coming up here come Monday night. Georgia Southern, one of the better teams in the league, have been for the past couple of years. Uh, what, what do you expect out of them, kind of, without giving away too much, obviously, kind of what's the game plan going in, into this one? The game plan is like always, let's, let's take care of the basketball and let's defend and rebound the basketball. And that's why we win in basketball games. Let's just be honest. It's not like we outscoring a bunch of people. All our games are re relatively really close to yeah. be honest about it. So uh, they've scouted us and we've scouted them. So basically, we're just going to say we're going to grind it out, make every possession tough for them, contest every shot, and try to take care of the basketball. What's been the difference, uh, you know, kind of bringing it back to all those close games mm -hmm. here, from last year to this year, whether it be on the defensive side, whether it be on the offensive side, you know, from, from a coaching standpoint, what, what have you noticed differently? I think the returning guys that I have have been coaches on the floor. Lord telling guys what to do offensively and defensively. We've been in so many close games last year and now this year some more close games, yeah. more close games, but these guys are a little bit older now and have been in so many games. They, they, I tell my guys, slow down, slow down. Let's do what we need to do offensively and defensively and take care of the basketball. And you can see the difference on the court. It's not crazy shots. They're trying to execute down the stretch and get a good look. Yeah. Although Marquise, he, he's been known to kind of throw up some, some, some heat checks here and well, there. Well, sometimes when you got a player that's good <laughs> offensively yeah. and you need him to score, some of those shots I don't like, and he knows that, but some of those, <laughs> some of those shots you have to live with sometimes because the kid can flat out score the basketball. Sometimes those no, no, no's turns into yes, yes, yes. Right in the, Louisiana Monroe turned into a what are you doing to a great shot. <laughs> <laughs> Just how I drew it up here. Yes, sir. 4-0 uh, in the conference. 
right now. Big mm -hmm. game, potentially going 5-0. and oh, Build you a little pad there. Uh, I know you tell your guys, crunch time, maybe slow down here. One game at a time. That's it. But we, we are fans, and we are on the other side of things, so we're going to hype <laughs> this thing up. Start ordering banners, start ordering rings right now. No. For the Trojans. No, 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 no. That, 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 and I'm serious about that. That is so far away. Uh, I'm telling you, we are focused on, on Georgia Southern. They're a good basketball mm -hmm. team. I'm not worried about being – you can be in first place right now in five days. Now you can be in third place. It's, it's, it's just the first four games of the year. Yeah. We're just getting started. Are we happy to be where we are? Yes, but we want to continue to get better and keep moving up. All right, so there you go. We'll pump our brakes as long as Coach says so here. <laughs> Please do. We're all going to take it. One game at a time here. Coach. Thank you so much. We appreciate you coming in here with us here. We'll, we'll try to get definitely the, get, get you the in fans here. out tomorrow. Absolutely. So get on out there to the Jack. 630 tip off. If you can't make it out there for whatever reason, the game's going to be on ESPN Plus. So you can just uh, take it on the go with you there. Watch it wherever you want to here. We're going to come back here and wrap up final score right after this.